Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Camel, and more importantly, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Detective series, a series in which we investigate, curate, speculate, hypothesize, theorize, and quite often, simply highlight and discuss cool, interesting, and hidden things in the Elder Scrolls games. Now, today's investigation begins in Skyrim's capital city, Solitude, a lovely and uniquely styled city, making it a joy to experience, like something from a fairy tale with its tiled roofs, palatially peppered plants, and cosily cobbled alleys. Solitude is always a beautiful city to visit, its raised location high walls and many guards also bring with it a reassuring sense of safety, at least on the surface. Yes, that's right, as we'll uncover throughout this video, Solitude and Skyrim itself could be poisoned and twisted from within by an undetected stench hidden right beneath Skyrim's own nose. To begin this uncovering, we will first be visiting the Blue Palace itself, Solitude's awe-inspiring landmark, where the newly appointed Jarl Elisif the Fair resides. So let us make our way to the Blue Palace and straight to the Court Wizard because I need to get myself a new soul, Jim. Ah, this must be him here. He certainly looks the part. Sibyl Stentor has a grasp of magical theory that I would never have expected from a human, even a Breton. That's great, mate. She sounds swell, but let's get down to business. Are you the court wizard? No, that honor is Sibyl Stentor's. A smart man steers clear of Stentor and keeps himself out of the dungeon when she's having a bad day. Oh, Sibyl Stentor is the court wizard, yet we are to stay clear of her? What do you mean? Let's just say that the headsman's axe may not be the worst way for a solitude jail prisoner to die. Look at that. I've told you to watch your tongue, and mine is waggling. I've said enough. Well, what the hell does that mean? You can't just leave us hanging like that, Meloran, you f- Well, he mentioned the headsman's axe, so perhaps if we ask the headsman himself, we can get a more rounded response. So, let's make our way to Solitude's dungeons. Down here, firstly, we will notice there is an unusually large amount of empty cells. Just a curious observation. Secondly, we can find Solitude's executioner, Arta. Hopefully, he can shed some light on what exactly Meloran was getting at. Hey, many visitors come to the dungeon. Every now and then, Sibyl Stentor will come by looking for volunteers. So, Sibyl is the court wizard and she takes prisoners from the dungeon as volunteers. Well, that would explain the empty cells. Most likely she uses them as test subjects for arcane spells and experiments. Nonetheless interesting, but it still hasn't quenched my thirst for Sibyl at all. Maybe we can abolish that thirst in the kitchens of the Blue Palace. Ah, just the man we needed, Oda, the palace's cook, the perfect man to quench thirsts. Folks at court won't admit it, but Sibyl Stentor scares us all to death. Something just ain't right about that Sibyl. You know, I've never seen her eat a thing. That can't be natural. Is that so, Oda? Sounds like she has an eating disorder. Again, Interesting. So far, we have an anorexic court wizard who takes prisoners as volunteers. But you know what? I feel like we need to know more. Let's just balls up and go and speak to her. If I needed something from you, you would know it. Be quick. I have little patience for mundane concerns. Struth, lass, what's your problem? Nothing. I'm busy, and I don't like being bothered unless I'm expecting something from you. Oh, don't give me that look. Fine, I suppose I can find some menial task to set your mind on. Hmm. We have something of a vampire problem. Bodies have been found with blood drained. I know of a den nearby you can wipe out as a precaution. Fair call, I'll see what I can do. I don't expect you to be capable of even that. Vampires are clever hunters. More clever than you, definitely. Alright, step back. I don't know if you're talking me down or talking them up, you cheeky little scrumpet. Well, I suppose if we want to get to know Sibyl, we should get on her good side and help her out by destroying the Vampire Master Den at Pine Moon Cave. So let's head there and do the deed. Inside Pine Moon Cave, we will of course find three filthy vampires, and to keep these blood-sucking leeches away from the citizens of Solitude, we must destroy them, just as Sibyl wished. Once we have achieved such a task, we must return to Miss Stentor and deliver the good news. Filthy creatures, aren't they? Living in the darkness like they do. So uncivilized. I prefer finery, like this. Here, for your trouble. 
And I suppose I should show you a little about illusion magic for free, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, well thank you, Miss Stentor. She taught us some things about illusion. And I tell you what, she must dislike vampires calling them filthy creatures. But I agree, I also prefer living in these more civilized conditions. Good things to be and myself are nothing like those blood-sucking filth. And the city needs people like us, keeping it clean, keeping it safe. And, uh, oh look, she's also a destruction trainer, that's handy. Although, when we finished her mission, she increased our illusion skill, not our destruction skill. Eh, whatever, she's apparently well versed in all magics. Ah, even now, that didn't really yield much in regards to shedding some sunlight on Miss Stentor here. We need to get closer with the court. Well, the first time we enter the Blue Palace, we will bear witness to this plea from Varnius Junius to the court asking for help. I swear to you, unnatural magics are coming from that cave. There are strange noises and lights. We need someone to investigate. Then we will immediately send out a legion to scour the cave and secure the town. Hafengar's people will always be safe under my Your rule. Eminence, my scrying has suggested nothing in the area. Dragon Bridge is under Imperial control. This is likely superstitious nonsense. Perhaps a more tempered reaction might be called for? Oh, yes, of course, you were right. Falk, tell Captain Aldous I said to assign a few extra soldiers to Dragonbridge. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. But about the cave? I will have someone take care of the cave as well, Varnius. You can rest easy. You're dismissed. Everyone in the court seems to be alert and reactive to helping Varnius, except Sibyl. And given she is very powerful in the arcane arts, wise beyond her years, possesses and has used her scrying magics, revealing there is no danger at Wolfskull Cave. Thank God for Sabeel. So, I mean, if we were to listen to anyone, it should probably be her, right? She is the court wizard of solitude. Skyrim's capital is quite a serious position she holds. So, yes, we should ask for her counsel. Not really. Varnius Junius is a fool. I'm sure nothing will come of it. I suppose if you're truly interested, you could talk to Falk. He's the better safe than sorry type. Yeah, look, if that Varnius fellow is a superstitious fool, it really is the man who cried wolf. Anyhow, I suppose we should talk to Falk Firebeard about it and see what he's got to say. You mean the Dragon Bridge issue? I'll be honest with you, I was planning to let that go. Varnius is a bit jumpy at the best of times. There have been reports of weird happenings near Wolfskull Cave. Travelers disappearing, odd lights, I suspect wild animals, or perhaps bandits. I don't think it's worth our time with the war going on. But if you want to clear out the cave, I'll make sure you're repaid for your work. Why is it called Wolfskull Cave? The cave has a bad history. Long ago, Potema the Wolf Queen used it for necromantic rituals. That's where it got the name. That was over 500 years ago. Nothing much down there now. But everyone's always convinced the cave is haunted. Hmm, I must say that does sound pretty suspicious. I suppose we should make our way to Wolf Skull Cave and check it out for ourselves. Once inside Wolf Skull Cave, we will find necromancers. Many, many necromancers. But deep. Deep inside the cave, we will also discover something very dark. Wolf Queen, hear our call and awaken. We summon Papema. We summon Papema. Long have you slept the dreamless sleep of death, Papema. No longer. Hear us, Wolf Queen. We summon you. We summon Papema. Yes! Yes! Return me to this realm! As our voices summon you, the blood of the innocent binds you, Wolf Queen. Summon, summon the words bound by blood. By blood. What? What are you doing? You fools! You cannot bind me to your wills. Summon, summon the words, words bound by, bound by blood. blood. You ants don't have the power to bind me! Something is wrong. There is an intruder. It's a ritual. 
A coven of necromancers are attempting to summon and harness the power of the Wolf Queen, Potima. Potima's septum was the Queen of Solitude in Skyrim's hold of her finger during the Third Era. She was the daughter of Pelagius, Septim II, and Quintilla. Even as a newborn, she was described as a she-wolf about ready to pounce. The Wolf Queen was a rightfully feared and most treacherous queen. Even after death, she would be feared and known as one of the most notable necromancers of her province. She is also one of only a few historic figures that have been viewed by scholars as unambiguously evil. And given the amount of evil people in the Elder Scrolls universe, being one of few to be labelled as unambiguously evil, as in unquestionably, undoubtedly evil, that really says something about Putima Septum. So a group of necromancers attempting to re-summon her and harness her powers is not a good thing for Solitude, or for Skyrim, or for Nern. We must put an end to this ritual and destroy these filthy necromancers, but most importantly take out the Ritual Master. And if I say so myself, I must say we took care of, oh shit she's flying away. Well I suppose we better go and sort that out. Soon enough, we will be sent into Potema's catacombs beneath Solitude to put the Wolf Queen to rest once and for all. Down here we can find plenty of necromatic vampires and their summoned minions. We should have known these dirty blood suckers would have something to do with it. Deep in the catacombs, as the armies of dead grow in numbers, we will soon enter the final two chambers. The Wolf Queen Potima appears to be at full strength, viciously attacking us with lightning and raising legions of undead in an attempt to stop us. But it is not enough. The final chamber has been entered, and Potima's final moment awaits. The Wolf Queen has been slain. Solitude has been saved. We have done it. We are the saviors of the city. Just think of all the lives we've saved. Look at all of these beautiful people still breathing because we took down the Wolf Queen. Although, my dear friends, I fear we may have saved one fewer life than we thought. Sibyl Stentor is not alive. On the other hand, the Detect Dead spell reveals she is in fact dead. Sibyl Stentor, the court wizard of solitude, is a vampire. Wow, this brings a new dynamic to the complexities of Sibyl Stentor. I suppose so many things make sense now. I have so very many ways to deal with people. Very few of them pleasant. No, that honor is Sibyl Stentor's. A smart man steers clear of Stentor. And keeps himself out of the dungeon when she's having a bad day. Let's just say that the headsman's axe may not be the worst way for a solitude jail prisoner to die. Look at that. I've told you to watch your tongue, and mine is waggling. I've said enough. If I needed something from you, you would know it. Folks at court won't admit it, but Sibyl Stentor scares us all to death. Something just ain't right about that Sibyl. You know, I've never seen her eat a thing. That can't be natural. Take care of yourself, and always remember, the world is ripe with people looking to spill your blood. Hey, many visitors come to the dungeon. Every now and then, Sibyl Stentor will come by looking for volunteers. She is a goddamned vampire, but does this mean she is evil? Remember, only after pestering her were we sent on a quest by her to wipe out a cave full of vampires. Surely if she's a vampire herself, she doesn't want to be wiping out vampires, unless she genuinely has the good of the people in mind. Perhaps the Pine Moon Cave Vampire Master was competition for her. You know, this city isn't big enough for the two of us kind of thing. Or perhaps she only assigned us to the task so we would be killed in the process. After all, she does say we're not capable of the task and that the vampires are more clever than we are. And remember what her response was to Vanius Junius asking for help with Wolf Skull Cave? Hafengar's people will always be safe under my Your Eminence, rule. my scrying has suggested nothing in the area. Dragon Bridge is under Imperial control. This is likely superstitious nonsense. A 500-year-old necromancer queen of Skyrim is being resurrected, yet Miss Stentor's scrying showed nothing of a threat and she dismissed the request for help 
as superstitious nonsense. It's hard to say, but it is most certainly suspicious. Let's not forget that Potamus catacombs were filled with vampires. We couldn't get a more suspicious bunch of Potama groupies together. So Sabeel's getting pretty suspicious, but I think we should just talk to her and see what her whole story is. Because at the moment, I'm rather confused as to who she is and what she is about. What does she want? So let's speak to her. How long have you been the court wizard? I was a member of the court during the reign of Torg's father. It was Torg who appointed me to the position. So you and the High King were close? Very. I helped raise him. Oh, I could not have been more proud to see Torg on the throne. He made a fine king. A fine king. You look very young, Sabeel. I wonder why. I like to think I've aged well. I'm certainly wiser than I once was. And I know when one should speak, and when one should hold their tongue. Yeah, sure, aged well. That's one way of putting it. I might describe it as sucking the life force out of hundreds of victims. But nonetheless, who hasn't done that? So Sibyl was a member of the court, and she was only appointed to the position of court wizard once High King Torig was in power. Now she also explains that they were close and that she helped raise Torig. Anyone else think it's getting suspicious that a vampire helped raise the to be king from birth only to then be appointed to be court wizard once Torig took the throne. Granted, they could have just been close, but I get a really weird vibe from Sabeel Stentor. Also, is anyone here actually aware that she is a vampire? People seem to be rather savvy to her dark ways, but surely a vampire as court wizard of solitude is not something that would be accepted. Are they making an exception for Sabeel because she is important to the city? Or is she fooling them all? Let's not forget that Sabeel Stentor is an expert destruction trainer, yet when we finish her quest she teaches us illusion magic. Illusion? Is that what this all is? Is she using her illusion magics to sway the positions of council members and whispering into the ears of those with power to shape Skyrim as she wills it? Did she brainwash High King Torig from birth to be her High King pawn? She does express that he would have made a fine king. A fine king. Did she have control of him? Or did she just love him? Is she evil or good? Is she truly a savior of Skyrim giving unmatched counsel to Solitude or is she poisoning the province from the very throne itself? Well, we can witness two interactions she has with other council members that show her perception, harshness, political prowess, and overall dominance within the Court of Solitude. I will need the following reagents for my studies. Please see to them. Miss Stentor. These are quite expensive. I trust you know how limited the Hold's funds are at this time. Yes, and I'm also aware of how necessary my divinations and wards have been in the city's defense. My experiments are all I ask for in return. Very well, but I suspect Her Grace will not be pleased. And? I've seen Jarl's come and go. This one only became Jarl because her husband died. She'll be replaced in a matter of months. Miss Stentor. Watch your tongue in the Jarl's court. On um, threat of what, exactly? This city wouldn't run without me. <coughs> now if you'll excuse me, my work awaits. It's nearly time to collect taxes on your properties here in the city, Bryling. We'll need to visit each home for an assessment. Is it that time again already? Very well. Let's meet this evening and make the arrangements. Oh, well done. Very subtle. I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I imply that you'd be meeting for purposes other than court business? You must forgive me. Hold your tongue, wizard, or you're likely to lose it. I should very much like to see you try it, my dear steward. Stop it, both of you. You're acting like children. She cuts through that bullshit quicker than a dung beetle, but more alarmingly, she does not seem to give two shakes of an alligator's tail about the Yarl of Solitude exclaiming that she will be replaced within a matter of months, she's only the Jarl because her husband died. And even if those facts might be true, these aren't the words of someone who would be supporting the Jarl. So she obviously shows she has no love or interest in Jarl Elisev. She is the court wizard of solitude, giving counsel to her, so she could just be bending her to her will. And we come back to it once again. Whose side is she on? 
Did she want Potema to return? After all, Sabeel is a vampire. Who knows how old she is? She could easily be over 500 years old. If that is the case, Sabeel Stentor would have been alive at the same time as the Wolf Queen Potema. Who knows, they could have been friends. Sabeel could be here to get Potema back on her throne. There is also one other piece of information that highlights the possibility that Sabeel Stentor and Potema have a connection. Once we defeat Potema once and for all, Sabeel's sleeping pattern becomes permanent. She will leave the courtroom and go to sleep. Forever. She isn't dead. Well, she is vampire dead, but not removed from existence dead. She's just asleep. Again, only after Potema has been defeated. Why would she do that? Unless, you know, they had some kind of connection. It's like Sabeel lost all her power or all of her energy at the exact moment that Potema was defeated. I gotta say, it's pretty weird. That's like flicking the light switch off and then saying that flicking the light switch off and the light going off had nothing to do with each other. It just happened to happen at the same time, but they're not related at all. It's like, yeah, dude, they are definitely related. There's some connection going on. But unfortunately, it's almost frustrating that there isn't anything concrete. Everything to do with Sabeel has some weird vampiric mist of uncertainty around it. Although I must say, just on a player to NPC interaction level, she doesn't seem evil. She has a kind of powerful, honest charm about her. But there are far too many weird things going on under that one robe that I can't get past, nor can I entirely define. Now, if Sibyl is killed or dies by completely natural means, of course, uh. Soon enough, Meloran will take her place as court wizard, and he will have this to say. Speak if you must, but mind your tongue. I do not suffer fools gladly. Now that Sibyl Stentor is out of the picture, I am indeed. And the court is, well, free of her eccentricities. Moving into her quarters was an interesting process. You are free to leave. If we compliment Meloran on how the position in court suits him, he will respond as such. It does indeed. You know, I hear you had something to do with Sibyl Stentor's demise. That must have been a hard bit of business. I hear Stentor had been alive for a long, long time. Now, despite Meloran claiming that moving into Sibyl's quarters was an interesting process, I searched high and low and found absolutely nothing interesting or out of the ordinary in her room. And Meloran also says that Sibyl had been around for a very long time, maybe for, I don't know, over 500 years perhaps. Anyway, let's list all the things we know about Sibyl Stentor and hopefully as a community we can figure out if she was good or evil. Perhaps even figure out what her motive was or is. Firstly, she is a vampire. Under normal circumstances, if that were to be known, she would be killed immediately. Being a vampire is not accepted in Skyrim, it's not accepted in society. Vampires are hunted and slain like dogs. The entire court must be completely unaware, and then even those people who are suspicious that she is a vampire fear her. They genuinely fear her. Even Meloran, a powerful wizard, tells you to steer clear of her because she's dangerous. She takes prisoners from the dungeons as volunteers, i.e. she drains the life from them in a slow and painful manner, at least in a way that is worse than the headsman's axe. She also only became the court wizard after being appointed the position by High King Torik, who she admits to raising and being very close to, so she could have very easily twisted his mind, either with pure psychological manipulation, brainwashing, or with illusion magics combined with vampiric powers and abilities. Now, if this were to be true, she could have easily have been using High King Torik as her puppet and essentially ruling Skyrim for herself. And Sibyl, despite being a vampire herself, will actually attack the Dragonborn if they are in their fourth stage of vampirism. And she also sends us on a mission to wipe out a cave full of vampires. 
So although she is a vampire, vampires in general don't seem to be important to her. Also in the game files, she belongs to a unique faction that only she belongs to, the faction of Sabeel Stentor. Which makes me think if she has her own faction in game, then she must be doing her own thing and like on a completely different level to everyone else in the court. And let us not forget that when Varnius Judius asks the court to send guards to check out Wolfskull Cave, Sabeel is quite quick, in fact, she actually interrupts Jarl Elisif to announce to the court that her scrying has shown no dangers in the area, and that sending guards would be an ill use of resources, as she dismisses Varnius Junius's concerns about Wolfskull Cave as a simple superstition. Of course, once we head there ourselves, what do we find? Oh, only the Wolf Queen Potema being resurrected and brought back into the realm of the living. Then we defeat Potema in her catacombs underneath Solitude, which don't forget, I did mention, they were filled with vampires. Vampires, Potema, connection, connection. And remember, once we kill the Wolf Queen, Sabeel Stentor goes to bed for the rest of the game. She doesn't have a sleeping pattern. She doesn't have a routine. She just goes to bed, like she lost all of her power and energy. This certainly points in the direction that Potema and Sabeel were connected. Remember what Meloran said about her? She has been alive for a very long time. Given her vampirism and natural immortality from this, she could have easily known the Wolf Queen Potema during her reign over 500 years ago. After all, she was the Queen of Solitude. Also, when Sabeel is talking to Falk Firebeard, she gives him a list of ingredients that she requires for her experiments. What experiments were these? Summoning rituals, maybe? Hmm, the final secret herbs and spices to kick off the summoning ritual for Potema? Or was Sibyl Stentor simply a politically minded court wizard, who happened to not give a shit about anyone else? And who just happened to be a vampire, and who happened to lose all of her energy once Potema was defeated? Although there is no concrete evidence of her nefarious plans, there are far too many coincidences here for her to just be some normal court wizard, going about her normal court wizard duties. So what do you think? Was she ruling Skyrim unbeknownst to the court? Was she bending the wills of her fellow court members with her illusion magics and her vampiric abilities? Do they even know she's a vampire? Perhaps they do know, but are too afraid to do anything. As we saw during the dialogue, she fears nothing in the court, even proclaiming that Jarl Elisif will be dead in a few months. Then, expressing how she can speak openly as the city wouldn't run without her, and she knows that nothing will ever happen to her. Also, when people challenge Sabeel Stentor, she simply says things like, I'd like to see her try. She knows she's untouchable, and I feel that the other court members fear her, and rightfully so. But being feared and actually trying to rethrone Protema are two different kettles of frogs. Sabeel Stentor, good or evil, you decide. I'd put my money on evil. And I do hope that you've enjoyed the unraveling and piecing together of this suspicious character the Breton vampiric court wizard of the Blue Palace of Solitude, Sibyl Stentor. If you do ever come to visit her, be sure to wear a steel plate neck armor. And if you do have any information, facts, evidence, speculations, theories, or anything to do with shedding more light on Sibyl Stentor, be sure to leave a comment. If you have any ideas for something that should be covered, in the Elder Scrolls Detective series, be sure to let me know or look into whatever strange and wonderful topics you present. If you did enjoy this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like. It makes the video look good. Leave a comment with your Elder Scrolls Detective ideas and your theories about Sabeel Stentor. And of course, if you did enjoy this video and you would like to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. Be sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button right here on YouTube so that you are notified when a new Elder Scrolls Detective video is uploaded. Now the other episodes I've already done for the Elder Scrolls Detective series can be found in the description. 
down there are also links to my Twitter, Patreon and social medias. Be sure to hit them up if you would like to support the channel. All my time and energy goes into these videos I create and your support is greatly appreciated in any and all forms. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen, you'll definitely enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.